It's that. interesting because, you know, this is systems thinking obviously is not just limited to business. It, yeah. it, it is, is something that comes into play in, in everything. Yeah. And, and I think that, that one of the first places where people recognized the importance of things, uh, looking at things at a systems level was in ecology. And a lot of the, the environmental mess that we're dealing with right now mm -hmm. globally is a result of a lack of systems thinking that, that, that characterized human behavior for hundreds of years, which is we didn't, we didn't understand that we could, you know, that if you dump pollutants in a river, you're going to poison the, the water supply downstream. We didn't understand that if you, you make a lot of smoke and burn a lot of, a lot of carbon, you're going to change the, 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 the atmospheric conditions and have all sorts of follow on effects of that. We didn't understand that if you, you know, make everything out of plastic, that it has to go somewhere. Yep. And it's kind of shocking, yeah. you know, to, I think particularly Nine, young people believe. today who've grown up in a world that, that that's hyper aware of these things. I think it's kind of shocking for them to think about the fact that, you know, not too long ago, not, not, you know, a thousand years ago, a hundred years ago, or even, you know, more than 50 years ago, most people didn't consider this type of thing at all. No, exactly. Yeah. It, uh, and, you know, you, you mentioned the, the, <clears throat> the roots of it. And, and one of the early, early um, proponents of it was von Burton Lampe, right? And that he came out of biology. Just like, no, you can't just take the cells apart and, and expect that, a lung is going to function when you put it all together. It does different things. It has different, and it also connects to other systems. Right. And then, you know, the, you look at the, um, you know, the, the limits of growth stuff that Forrester and, and Meadows um, did and, and just waking the world up. And that's why the um, World Economic Forum it has identified as one of the top skills we've got to get people using because we're not going to solve these problems with, with no. re reductionist, Lamo thinking. Yeah, you've heard the term Lamo, and, and uh, as yeah. opposed to VUCA, right? We're, we're, you're going to have to think about these problems. I don't know. I heard Lamo, but I can't remember what it stands for. So, so educate Lin me and the rest of our listeners. Yeah, linear anthropocentric. So you know, A follows B follows C, which systems don't do. Anthropocentric. We look at the world through our lens, mm -hmm. and there's a fascinating story about that. I don't know if you ever read about the. Um, earthquake off of Banda Aceh and the tidal wave that hit Banda Aceh, there was a, mm -hmm. and I'll try to find it and send it to you, but there was a, a memoir essentially published by a guy who was standing on the beach at, on Banda Aceh with his cocktail, admiring this beautiful weather yes. that was going on. And he said, I was struck by the fact that all of the animals were heading for the forest and going mm -hmm. inland. Right. I've seen and videos so I, of I this. Yeah, I couldn't there's, understand. There's people are just standing on the beach going, ooh, cool, yeah, taking pictures with pretty. their cell phones yeah. and yeah. stuff. And you know, all the animals sensing. are going, yeah. yeah, and we yeah. think we're the sentient species here. <laughs> so that's anthropocentrism, you know, writ large. Um, and then M is is mechanistic, mm. right? Um, and O is organized. And none of those things are true, right? Wow. Yeah. We have to add this to our to our... To yeah. our curriculum, Marcus, the antonym of VUCA, lamo thinking, yeah. and it's such a perfect, it's such a perfect <laughs> yeah. name for it. It you is, know, isn't you it? Derived from lame, yeah. right? right. <laughs> but it's so true. I mean, you know, most people want to look at all problems as linear. Yep. You know, we 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 view everything through an anthropocentric lens, mechanistic thinking. You know, if if I pull this lever, I I solve this problem, <laughs> and and everything is is organized. You know, that's an interesting one because I do think that every, everything is organized at a certain level, but it's organized at a lot more complex and chaotic level than most they people like realize. Chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Is it yeah. organized at the systemic level? Right. That's yeah. the key. And right. that's one of the distinctions I make. It's very easy to be systematic. Right. The question is, are you systemic? Are you really looking at the whole? Oh, I love that. That people is a don't great like quote. It, People they don't like, do it. They're, like they're, it. They're afraid of it. They're uncomfortable. We talk about getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and with ambiguity. Yep. yep. And if you're if you're not organized in the way you want to be or think you should be, which you often really are in a complex adaptive mm -hmm. system, then that's where people, I think, start to lose it. They You see their behaviors change. They become very uncomfortable. You start to see reactive behavior rather than what we talk about being responsive because they're not yep. forward thinking. They're not planning properly. They haven't delegated, and then all of a sudden, 
the reality of where they are catches them unaware, which everybody else can see it coming. But if you have that myopic view and your head's been in the sand, then it becomes mm -hmm. a shock to people.